Thank you so much, Ivan, for coming to visit us today. You're welcome. My pleasure. Yes. You caught in the acting bug at a very young age. Did you perform in school play? When did you know that acting, theater, and film would be a career choice? Well, you know, uh, I I did perform in school plays. Uh, I think my first uh, play was one of those uh, uh, sort of talent show uh, uh, mandatory things for school. And I was probably eight years old, eight or nine years old. And I remember being in this in the s uh, public in the municipal theater of the city where I grew up in Puerto Rico and being in this wonderful old building with a beautiful stage and 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 uh, it is uh, the memory is very vivid um so a uh, fast forward I think maybe 10 years 10 to 11 years later I was uh, going to college at a state university in, in uh, Buffalo, New York. And uh, I thought I was going to be a uh, animal doctor. I wanted to go to school to be an, a, a vet, right? And uh, I took a couple of biology classes. I didn't do very well in the bio in biology classes. So I was asking myself, okay, what am I gonna do now? Where, where, what am I gonna study? And uh, I had a uh, professor who I knew from a summer program that I attended before uh, going to college, the summer before going to college. And he said to me, well, you know, I'm teaching a theater class. Why don't you come in and check it out? And I said, well, well sure, yeah, I'll come and check it out. And I uh, took an took a, a introduction to theater course with uh, Professor Chase and loved every minute of it. So just kind of reconnected to, to, to that passion that, was, that I started with when I was eight years old. And uh, so that's around that time, that's when I kind of decided that I would go into theater and, and, and film and television as a career, whether it was whether it was going to be on stage or behind stage or um, in front of the camera or behind the camera. So around 18, 19 years old, that's when I decided to pursue it um, as a career. You worked for Juilliard in Stanford, which is very impressive. What are one of two experiences that had a positive impact on your life and that carries with you to this day? Well, <clears throat> so I, I, I landed at the Juilliard School Drama Division in New York City in 1999 it was my first job out of college um, I, it was I was it was a dream come true um, and, and being part of the drama division and I, I I met I met I met a lot of very interesting people a lot of uh, great actors and directors uh, for uh, the a lot of theater and, and film actors and directors as well. Um, just being in that environment every day was was a uh, was a, a blessing. Um, I think that's one of the positive experiences that I had was the fact that I was able to work with such brilliant creative people. Um, uh, acting, acting uh, coaches and, and voice coaches and, and, and faculty members that are that are just uh, uh, brilliant. Um, also, 
being at Stanford for the years that I was at Stanford, um, again, I think meeting really, really um, amazing artists music, mu in the music industry, right? People like Philip Glass and Winter Marcellus and, 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 um, and, uh, and just, just being a part of, 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 of something that's to entertain and teach audiences at Stanford and, and beyond Stanford as well because we had we had uh, we, we did a lot of educational and community outreach so I think the, the positive experiences that I that I carry with me every day are meeting these wonderful people and 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 and, and gaining and learning from those experiences learning from those people cool. yeah. Thank you, Ben. So now let's have Marco. Um, nice to meet you, Ivan. Uh, I nice remember that I met you in voiceover. Yes. Um, got a question for you. Uh, where did you study acting? What advice would you give an aspiring actor? We hear about all the exciting things, but what would, what? But what's about the hard work involved? What does an actor need to do to prepare for a role? Um, so I studied acting at, at a state university in in uh, New York. I also I consider uh, part of my acting training. Uh, my job at, at Juilliard kind of brought a lot of the um, acting training as well. Um, <clears throat> I also took a few classes at NYU. And what advice can I give an actor, an aspiring actor? I think um, do your work. Do your, do your work. I think doing, doing the research on the character that you're playing, right? Yes. Um, doing the work and, and, and really committing fully to the to the work. Um, acting is not it's, it's challenging. Um, I, I, it takes a lot of preparation not only um, mentally but physically as well. Um, so I think I think just, just committing fully to the to the work that's my that's my that's the main advice and, and take care of yourself because your body as a whole, not only your voice and your body, are, are the main instruments and probably one of the most important instruments and, and for an actor, right? Because right. we have to communicate and you want to be able to communicate in, a, in, a, in, a, um, in, a, in an efficient way. So taking care of yourself as a whole um, and, and committing to the work when you're doing a play um, because the days could be long and the research could be extensive to, 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 uh, to create a character or just or to become a character, right? A character like mm -hmm. Hamilton, for example. Yes. Could you imagine doing the research for Hamilton? Probably, uh, I mean, it's... It's amazing to see uh, the amount of work um, that, that I got a sad question. Uh, mm -hmm. You you look like you may be on the movies. <laughs> Thank you. I take that as a compliment. Yes. I uh, I've done I've done a few things. I've done um, I did a couple of uh, student films for graduate NYU students. This is years ago. I've uh, I've done some. Uh, Dumpson, I did a television uh, episode in a television series uh, back in uh, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Right. And <laughs> have you recently, I've uh, seen you have recently visited the College of Adapted Arts and observed the CAA theater classes lead by Professor Ka Sizel, Katie Sizel. 
share with us what you took away after watching our students experiencing acting and learn the craft of acting. What life skills can acting teach us that we can use in our pro personal lives? Um, Professor Katie was inspiring, brilliant, creative. Um, she was, her energy is contagious. She was overall just amazing. I had, I had such a great time observing her class. And I said to her last week after observing the graduate class that I would try it and I would make it every Friday to come and hang out in her class. That's how, yeah. that's how much I, I enjoyed the class. Um, I, you know, the students, are doing um, really amazing work. Um, I was I was just uh, I was more than blown away by 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 uh, mm -hmm. some of the work that that students are doing um, in Katie in Professor Katie's class. I think Professor Katie um, Professor Katie's guidance is is is. Uh, Powerful, solid, powerful. Yeah, yeah. I think um, seeing the students' uh, work on stage uh, and, and and the commitment really is 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 uh, is uh, it's just it's just marvelous. I think it's just it's, it's just uh, incredible. Um, yeah. Um. Like I don't, I remember that I changed my voice in front of you, and I felt like I got the confidence to change my voice in front of the other actor. And I, after I was done, whoa, I, I felt proud. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's what it's all about, you know. Like a uh, uh, theater is also uh, theater is all is about taking risk. Yeah. Right. Acting is about taking risk. So you you you, you when you're up there on stage. You gotta take risk. Yes. Right. Being in the moment, being present, but also taking risk, and 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 relying on yourself and those who are on stage with you that you're gonna get through the scene. Right. What's, so. What I noticed, you were so proud too. Then we took only one take. Yeah. No. No. It was. It was. It was. It was impressive. It was. I. I. Uh, no. I was. Uh, as I said, I, I was blown away. I think you know, and, and also to to address your other question about life skills that can teach you guys that you can use in your personal lives. I think theater taught me how to be how to think out outside of the box. You've heard of that before, yeah, right? Yes. Think creatively think in ways that that you can you can change the world really yeah. you can change the society that we live in you could um, de -stigma stigmatize some 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 uh, 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 opinions and, and uh, of society right mm -hmm. so right. so so finding that uh, a really cool sort of creative way of, of, of changing the world I think that's my that's the best mm -hmm. that's yes. what life skills can like can teach you guys that how how like what you can use in your own personal lives I think thinking outside of the box being creative and uh, also you know this is something that I've learned in the theater as well but I knew from my mom instilled this in me, being kind to one another, respecting people as well. So, I mean, you take all of this into the theater and uh, you're gonna be a good actor. People are gonna want it and people are gonna want to work with you. Yes. All right. Some powerful words. Thank you. Now we're gonna have 
Now we're going to have a few more questions from Angel. So, yeah, I have a younger sister. Her name is Mariam. And Mariam uh, is 12 years old, and she has Down syndrome. Uh, she lives in Puerto Rico with her mother. Um, what does she like to do? She likes to dance. She likes to eat. She likes to hang out with her older sister, and she likes to watch cartoons on the on the tablet. Um, she's a, 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 a special, my little special uh, angel. Um, she's a. She's helped me broaden my my thoughts and, and uh, about what people with disabilities can do. Um, being uh, being able to to go to school um, and just uh, to be uh, it's kind of a this is a this is a really tough question I, I'm th my mind is, is is racing so much it's, it's okay. getting so I emotional um, I um Take your time, by the way. You know, people, people like like my little sister with with different abilities can make a change. You miss her that much. I miss my red sister. And I hope I hope that I can I can uh, I could be around for her. And I can help her and I can be around for her and I could uh, and I could spend some show her Do you have a picture of her?
This college means that means everything to my big sister. Especially me the most. It's all about me about him. Thanks to my big sister. Yeah. Yeah, I got a picture right here. Let me go back. I can't hold a grudge, but deep down There she is. Oh, my God. oh, she's so sweet. <laughs> oh, precious. Oh, that's a great picture. I love the way you're looking at her. <laughs> that's a beautiful picture. Yeah. All the scrub. Nice. Yeah. There you go. Anthony. Anthony. And then what's the next question, Angel, that you can ask? Okay. What has Bartel for CAA meant to you? What would you say to others about this? Unique cartel model for all abilities. Volunteering for CAA has meant for me. Um, has been has been a um, a warm. Has given me a warm feelings from from the beginning, from the day that I walked here, in here with my wife and my stepdaughter to uh, take a tour to meet your sister. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to, I wanted to be involved because it, it, it felt like such a special place. Um, it felt like a place which is has so much purpose, um, offers uh, so much guidance through the arts, which is really, really important. The arts have been such an important part of my life. Um, so for me, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's, it's, it's been, really it's become an important part of my life here in California um, I think I've been I've, I've talked to two individuals about CAA um, one of them my mentor a good friend of mine uh, a, a well-known actor his name is Stephen McKinley Henderson. And Stephen um, is, I told him, you know, hey, uh, I'm, I'm volunteering in this place. Check this out. It's a really special place. Um, it provides a equitable college experience to adults with disabilities. And he, um, I just want to spread the word. I want to spread the word on, on CAA because I believe in CAA as, a, as an organization, as an institution, as a place where adults with disabilities can be themselves and can learn as well, uh, can learn through the, the arts. Thank you so much. And um, um, we have two last questions for you. Um, um, I have a app. I know where 
well. And he lives in New York City. We know him so well. And it, he, he does have a movie out. As life goes on, when Chris book. And he does have doubts, just like me. I'm 45, and he's 48. And he is an actor, just like you. And my sister gave me the movie the, the whole set of his very own movie all by himself with his, his name on the title of it. And I need to know, does Chris Book know his, his part, part, his line, or by his inside his heart or mind to be an actor. On, on the set. Does he need to know? Well, you know, I, I don't know what his process is like as an actor, right? Um, and I don't know any of his work. You actually told me about Chris Berg last, when I met you, right? Last last week, you told me about him. Yes, I did. You introduced me to him. So, he probably has to know all the lines by heart. He probably looks at, he probably looks at his script, the script. Um, Probably, you know, in film also, one thing that we have to take into consideration is that in film and television, you have the ability to stop, right? The director can, can yell, cut, and the camera stops. And so you have, you have, kind of, you stop and you have a little break to look over your lines. Okay. In theater, you can't do that, right? Because in theater, you're in front of a live audience. So uh, in theater, nobody's gonna yell cut, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So the play, the play has to go on. Even if you forget your lines and you're on stage, which, which happened to me numerous times, forget my lines on stage, mm -hmm. and then your actor, your, your partner, the person that's there with you, kind of gives you a a clue as to what your line is and then you pick it up from there and you go, right? And you continue the scene. But in but in, in, in there's there's a luxury in television and film which a lot of people don't 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 you don't um get because you can actually stop in television and film. In theater you can't stop. So I'm sure Chris Bird knows all his lines. But uh I'm also probably he probably has a little chance to like stop and take a look at the lines again is it is by heart. It's on the hook. Oh yeah, sure. Not no. not up here. No, no. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. From here, okay. everything's got to come from yeah. the heart, right? Okay. Yeah, everything's got to come from the heart. From here, you got to be able to. You got to be able to 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 feel your your character, right? You got to be able to feel your the lines that you're saying as a character in order to convince those people that are watching whether it's watching your film on a screen or watching you live in the theater sweet right <laughs> tell them right yeah mm. so um, we're running we're running out of time so i need to oh sorry about that no okay. problem at all that was a great question so now we're gonna have one last question yeah, as a last question for you, what was it like to meet Mr. Winton Mar Marcells, such a brilliant musician? Yeah, I, I, um, 
I, I met Winton um, probably around probably like 18, 19 years ago. I was a uh, I was, uh, I was at the Juilliard School, and I was working with with a uh, with a lady at the time that was uh, the legal counsel for the school, and she actually introduced me to uh, Winton, um, who was actually working on starting the jazz program at the Juilliard School mm -hmm. during that time. For uh, and so I, I met Winton, and he was super super cool. Um, and then I didn't see him for <laughs> 17 years, maybe. Wow. And when I was at uh, when I was at Stanford, he came to Stanford to play with his uh, orchestra, the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, and uh, at Bain Concert Hall, where where I uh, worked. Mm. as the artist artist liaison and uh, so I got to see him again 17 years later um, and then I got to see him again last September um, last yeah last September mm. and I know one of his uh, one of his uh, band leaders though he is the main person but also this another band leader, his name is Victor Goins, who's a saxophonist and a, a, a saxophone player and flute uh, player, I believe, as well. And uh, I got to see Victor, who I also met at Juilliard about 18, 19 years ago. Um, yeah, those guys are super, super cool, extremely talented. Um, Winton is a, 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 a genius. Mm musical genius um, if it wasn't uh, I think Winton has kept an era of jazz alive um, and has kept American history a part of American history that uh, a lot of people um, don't are not aware of and uh, and he's just a, a really cool cool really cool uh, individual Thank you so much, Ivan, for taking the time to participate in our podcast. You're welcome, guys. It was a pleasure. Really. Thank you so much.